five connections for the cleaning system. Three primary ones on this side, and the drain. And over on this side of the machine is the outlet from the cleaning station to the RO or the guys get. Let me explain you three. The first one, right here, is an inch and a half pipe connection. This is for bringing fresh water into the tank. If you're going to mix powder chemicals, you should always start first with some RO permeate water. Fill this up before adding the chemicals. Always add the chemicals to the water, not the water to the chemicals. So bring your, you open this valve, and you can bring pressurized feed and RO permeate water into this tank to fill it up. This is strictly a fill now. Next one. The next one is that this is the drain. If you want to drain the tank and get all the chemicals out, get all the water out, rinse it out, whatever, open this valve, drain it. There is an overflow. We took it off for the demonstration. But there's an overflow pipe which will be supplied with the system, which connects to this drain. So if for some reason the tank overflows, it will not go out the top. It will come out this pipe down to the drain and out. So then we have these two primary connections right here. These are the return lines from the RO skid and EDI skid. One of them is from the concentrate, one of them is from the permeate. So you will run pipes from this to the permeate outlet cleaning connection on the RO and also to the permeate outlet connection on the EDI. Both of those will tee together and come here. Same for the concentrate. You will actually have to make three connections to the concentrate. One to the EDI, one to the Array 1 concentrate outlet for the RO, one to the Array 2 concentrate outlet from the RO. Those three should all be seen together and brought back to this pipe. So the way the cleaning station will work is the cleaning station will be pumped out to the RO skid or out to the EDI skid, go through the EDI or RO skid, and then come back to these two pipes. Permeate. Now on this side, you'll see the outlet. This is where the clean solution exits the system, through this valve and out through this plant. This connection here is just for, for testing purposes here. And the actual installation connection should be made to this plant right here, three inch plant. So when the cleaning system is running, the cleaning, system, the cleaning solution will come through this part Cleaning solution inlet of array one, cleaning solution inlet of array two, cleaning solution feed inlet to EDI. Three connections, T back to this pipe. That's all your piping connections on the skid. Five connections. Outlet of cleaning solutions to the RO and EDI skids. Drain, permeate fill to fill the tank, permeate return from the RO or EDI skid. Concentrate return from the RO or EDI system. Okay, now I'll explain how the system is operated using the valves that are installed on the system. The first one, this is the suction valve into the pump. This valve's got to be open before the pump can run, otherwise the pump will not have any water come in, it'll run dry and begin. Keep this valve in open position. Then we have two adjustment valves. This one is what we call the recycle valve because it allows the cleaning solution to recycle back into the tank. This valve, both control valves, this valve allows the cleaning solution to go out through the cartridge filter and out to the RO or EDI skid. Last valve, and this is the cleaning solution out. So under normal operation, this valve will be open, this valve will be open, and then you use these two valves adjust the flows, how much water or solution goes out to the skids, how much solution recycles back into the tank. Adjust those two valves back to work. Of course, when you're in the cleaning mode, these valves have got to be open so that the cleaning solution can return back to the skids and come back into the tank. The drain valve should be closed, the permit fill valve should be closed. If you're just going to rinse out the tank, fill the tank, close these other valves, open the drain, open this, you can bring the water through, flush it out the drain, 
or you can just close this, fill this tank up with water before you start. That's all the valves. So let's review again. Normal operating mode, the two valves on top after the open. The exit valve here is open. The suction valve into the pump is open. And these two valves are adjusted. Normally when startup, we will open this one completely. And we will close the flow control valve completely. Open this. Close this. we want to mix our chemicals up and we want to make sure by just recirculating through back into my mechanic. Mix our chemicals up and make sure everything is working okay before we start pumping solution back out to the RO skid. I recommend just for safety purposes since some of these cleaning chemicals are hazardous at first just fill it with water, permeate water. Close that, open this, circulate back through, make sure everything's good. Then Start to open this valve until you get the flow rate you want through this flow meter, get some flow, then you can close this valve off if you need. If you can't get enough flow over there, you can start to close this valve and then the flow will go off. But I would do all that first with permeate, not chemicals. After you have everything the way you want, then run chemicals. It's a lot easier to fix a leak if you have water, not nasty hazardous chemicals. So the first step. Open that completely, close this completely, run the system, circulate for a while, then close, open that valve, and then if necessary, close this one off. Okay. Let me explain now the instruments and uh, controls of the system. We have three pressure gauges. First one measures the pump pressure coming out of the discharge of the pump before this valve, the other valve just coming out of the pump. Then we have two that are before and after the start of filter. These two, you should examine, check the differential pressure across the two gauges. If you start, as norm, it's very normal during cleaning that a lot of uh, kind of scale, bacteria, dirt, you know, all kinds of things can be broken off of the membrane surface. And they will be captured by this cartridge filter. It's very possible that at, over time, outlet pressure will drop even though the inlet pressure stays relatively constant. When, that, when you start to see that differential pressure go up, you may have to change your cartridge. So that's what these two gauges are for. Just to check to see how much pressure you're losing across the cartridge. If there's a huge drop here between your pump discharge pressure and your uh, cartridge filter pressure, you can adjust these valves. You're trying to get, the important thing is that this pressure going into the RO memory should be between 20 and 60 psi, preferably more between 40 and 60 psi. If for some reason you have these valves adjusted or your cartridge filter is clogged and the pressure drops too low, the cleaning will not be as effective. So you have to adjust these valves and use clean enough cartridges that you can keep this pressure here between 40 and 60. Let's talk about the instruments here. We have one instrument on the front panel, this is the pH meter. It measures the solution of the pH flowing through the system. When you're doing an acid cleaning, this pH should measure between 2 and 3. If you're doing a caustic cleaning with high pH, it should be between 10 and 11. These are approximate numbers that depends on the cleaning solution you use. In general, if you're going to remove mineral scale, calcium, magnesium, things like that, acid clean, low pH, 2 to 3. Going to take out bacteria, silica, colloids, silt, sediment, using a high pH solution. pH here should be 10 to 11. What you do is begin, as we mentioned earlier, close that valve, open this valve, circulate your solution here until you see the pH in the range that you want. If it's too low, add some more acid, get the pH down. If it's too high, you're doing a high pH solution, it's not high enough, add some more caustic. If you get overshoot, too low, it's not such a problem. If it's, if it's, if let's say two to three is your target, so it's one to two, that's not so important. If it's 11 to 12, it's not so important. So you're trying to get approximate range. But adjust your chemical concentration at, by recirculating through back in the tank until you get the pH reading that you want. For installation purposes, it's important to know that these pH electrodes are consumable. 
once they get exposed to the air, they have a useful life of six months to a year. It's important that the pH electrodes stay wet. So we ship it, when we ship the equipment, the pH electrode is not installed because we don't want it to be exposed to the air. When you get to the job site and you install and you're ready to clean, then you should put the pH electrode in right here and plug the cable into the back of the meter. Right here. It's just a connector that on that turn. Okay? Eventually, it, it, when you're done, it's, you need to keep that probe wet. There's a little cap you can put on there and put some water in it and keep it wet. But don't let it stay exposed to the air. Then we have some controls on the front panel here. Very simple controls. Basically an on-off switch. You have a turn the pump on, the green light comes on when the pump runs. These two lights are level switch indicators. When the tank level is too low, that bottom light will come on, low level, and the pump will not be able to run. It will lock out the pump so the pump cannot run dry. When the high level light is on, that means the tank is full enough and you don't need to add any more water. If it is not an alarm, it will not stop anything. In general, the reason that is there is so you know how full to make the tank. If you keep filling the water up until the red light comes on, you're good. Okay? But it's not an alarm condition. So if you want to run the system, turn the pump on. It's that simple. Wiring connections are very simple for this machine. All you have to do is bring power into the top. We have a main switch breaker here. I think it's 30 amperes. That's 30 amp service. You're going to bring 50 hertz, 380 volt, three phase electrical supply, 30 amp power into the top of this main circuit breaker. And then you have a ground wire here. There's a ground terminal over here. You bring your ground wire to the ground. You three phase power to the top. That's all. That's all the electrical connection you need to make. Everything else is completely pre wired. You have a disconnect handle here, so you need to open and close the enclosure. The handle needs to be in the off position. When it's in the off position, it disables the power so it's safe to go into the panel. When, the, when, it's, when you want to run the system, this has to be in the on position. If you don't have this in on position, the power will not be made available from the circuit breaker into the rest of the devices. 